Hey everyone, welcome to another video in my Building Message Driven Systems playlist. Last time we looked at how do we send a message to a queue on Azure Service Bus. This time we're going to look at how do we receive that same message from Azure Service Bus. So we'll dive straight in and I'll head over to Visual Studio. Okay, so then we find ourselves in Visual Studio. This is the code that we finished with in our last video. Uh, we've got a console write line that writes out that our program started. Then we create our queue client. We give it our uh, connection string to Azure Service Bus. We tell it the queue that we want to deal with, which is demo queue. Uh, and then we tell it the receive mode that we're looking for, which when we're sending didn't really matter, but today we'll talk about why it does matter uh, when we're receiving messages. And then our retry policy just as being default. Uh, and then we encoded a message, a string uh, into some bytes, and then we sent that on Service Bus. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to just make some space just above this here. Uh, and we're going to go to our queue client and call uh, register message handler. Now this is the method that you use to subscribe to any kind of queue. On service bus, you have to pass it two arguments. The first one is the message handler function. So you take in a message and a cancellation token and return a task. You can do async if you want. Uh, and then the second one is an exception handler effectively. So that gets an exception received event args uh, and passes that into your function and then you return a task. So if your message handler throws any kind of exception while it's running, or if service bus encounters some exception while it's processing messages for you, that exception handler will get called. Uh, so the first one, we take in message and the cancel token, and then uh, that's our first one, that's our message handler. Uh, and then we can have another one here that takes in uh, exception arguments. And there we go. So these are both, uh, these both return as task. So we can just hit return uh, task, complete a task at the bottom. And then we can do the same in here. Let's get rid of that build error. Uh, and so the first thing we want to do is take a look at our message. This has a body property as well, which is a byte array. So that's going to be the same byte array that we sent when we sent a message. Uh, so we can go grab that into a variable. We'll call it body bytes. And then we can use uh, the same method that we use for kind of encoding it. We can use system system text encoding UTF-8. Uh, and then the reverse of get bytes is get string. We'll pass in the body bytes and that'll give us a string back. And then we can write that to the console. So console dot uh, write line will say message received. and then add our message to that. And then here, when we receive an exception, um, we can also just write that to the console. So console write line, and we'll say exception occurred. And then we can write, uh, if we look at our exception args, that has the exception as a property on that, so we can just write that out just to string that to the console. And so once we've called this register message handler, we're going to be subscribed to service bus. So it's going to start this kind of like message pump where it's receiving messages from the queue and calling our function for them and awaiting the task that we return. Uh, and then down here, in order that we can properly test this, I'm going to uh, wrap this sending code in a while true so we can do this more than once. Um, I'm going to say our... Uh, message text i'm going to get that from the console so i'm going to read line from the console uh, if our message text this is just a little breakout if our message text is quit then we can uh, we can break out of our while at the program end otherwise we're going to encode that message text that we type in and send that on service bus so what's going to happen is when this application starts now we're going to connect to the service bus we're going to register our message handlers. We're going to subscribe to messages. Then we're going to go through this loop of actually uh, publishing messages. So we should be able to, to kind of type in something to publish, hit enter, and then see that that comes back from service bus. So let's take a look and see how that program looks when it runs. So just wait for that kind of black box to appear. One screen or the other. I might miss it and hit, uh, there we go. So it started. Uh, so we should now be subscribed to Service Bus. So whatever we type in here, if we type in a message, we should see that yeah, very rapidly get returned from Service Bus uh, as a message from the front of the queue. So we can uh, type in another 
Perfect. And so we're sending these messages to service bus, we're also subscribed, so we're receiving them back from the front of the queue. Other applications somewhere could also uh, kind of receive those. But I think if we uh, go back to the Solution Explorer and start another one of these. Uh, debug, start new instance. We'll see them both here. So that one received it. That, that time the other application received it. That's why I got it. So it's like round robin between our between our receivers. Um, right, they're both getting them from from the queue. So we can see that it is actually going all the way out and coming all the way back because our two different applications are kind of seeing that. So uh, that's successfully sending. So uh, so sending and receiving messages. Uh, the one thing I will kind of show you next uh, is what happens if we uh, re return. We we throw an exception in here. We have something go wrong. So when you're you know when you're uh, processing messages, you probably want to access a database, things like that. So there may be there may be things that could definitely go wrong. Um, so we're going to simulate that now by throwing an exception. I'm going to run this without debugging because uh, I don't want to keep coming into the breakpoint on that exception. So here's our application. Uh, we'll type in message. And then we received the message, but we got this exception, right? So uh, that actually comes in the second hand that we write exception occurred that we're seeing there. Uh, and so that's because the service bus drivers are kind of calling our uh, exception handler. The, the message has been uh, received from service bus and, and removed from service bus. So we, we're just, now we've got this exception. We kind of haven't processed it and we kind of lost the message. And so I said earlier in the video, that it was kind of important what your uh, receive mode was. And so that was receive and delete. So every time we receive the message, service bus deletes it immediately. No matter what we do with processing, it won't have the message to deliver again. If we change that to peak clock, then what that means is we get a copy of the message, but it stays at the front of the queue locked. So it doesn't get delivered to anybody else uh, until we kind of time out or, or uh, fail to process the message. If we successfully process the message, then it will get removed at that point. So now if we do peak clock, we're gonna see something uh, a little bit different in that behavior. So I'm gonna start with that debugging again. And we're gonna see the application comes up. And then if we send a message now, what we'll expect to see is that we, we uh, send the message, we receive it, we throw the exception. Uh, then we're gonna go back to um, kind of recover from that point, go back to service bus, say, hey, give us another message. That message is still at the front of the queue, so we're gonna get that message again more than once. All right, and so that actually happened 10 times, which is the default number of times that Service Bus will attempt to give you a message. So we, receive, we sent the message, we received it, we had the exception, we received it again, we had the exception. All right, and so this is the foundation of how we do reliable messaging with Service Bus, is that we make sure that we do peak clock when we're receiving messages, and then we have to successfully run our uh, message handler without uh, throwing any kind of exceptions in order for it to be uh, uh, the message to be acknowledged and, and removed from service bus. Uh, and you can get even more fine grained control on, on exactly how that works and make it a bit more explicit uh, on, on, on when exactly you consider yourself to successfully process the message. Uh, but that's basically the, the kind of the start and the end of it. So uh, again, connecting to service bus, we register our message handler, which is this method here. Uh, I'll take out the kind of exception thrower for now. Um, we also register our exception, so we message handler, exception handler, uh, and then we, as we send messages, we receive them. So that's it. In the future videos, we're going to talk about how do we make that more reliable? How do we get more granular control over, over uh, how many times we're able to receive their message um, and, and when exactly we consider it to be successfully processed? Uh, we'll talk about topics and subscriptions, uh, talk about how can we manage our service bus from code. So if I wanted to send to that queue and it doesn't yet exist, we can create it from code and so I can show some of those demos as well. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit like, uh, subscribe to see the rest of the videos that come up. You can turn on notifications uh, and then drop me a comment. Uh, if you liked the video, what you liked about it, if you didn't, what you didn't. Uh, and if you have any requests for kind of other topics or other kind of walkthroughs for your service bus, um, then drop those in the comments as well. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, I'll see you next time.